Hello everyone, welcome to episode 635 of Aussie Tech Heads, the 6th of the 6th, 2019. How are you all doing? Uh, we're brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, servers operate on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL, uh, certificates, Aussie support, domain registration and more. Uh, you can, uh, If you're looking for web hosting, uh, stable web hosting, I think it's got about 100% uptime. Or if it's not 100, it's 99.999%. It's very stable system, it's very secure. Uh, yes, it's just awesome athwebhosting.com.au and also startnewcompany.com.au if you're wanting to register a company an Australian company fast, easy and direct you can with ASIC all docs provided and docs are held in your account for download at any time later on if you're if you are an accountant or professional, you can brand the documents eh, to, uh, to increase the, uh, the, the, the wow factor for your clients. You can put your name on the constitution and so forth. And also, uh, you can also register ABN, TFN, uh, PAYG, GST, and oh, the list just goes on. That's at startnewcompany.com.au. Give them a shot uh, there and have a chat. They've got a little chat button down the bottom. Um, they're very responsive. You can just type it in. They say, hi, how are going? And uh, someone will answer you. They're very responsive. Startnewcompany.com.au. All right. Also, oh, yes, and also, I can't forget Aussie Byte. Jace, if you want to do a Fitbit app gallery purchase of a, a thingo, a weather app, if I can get, get you guys a weather app to show you. There you go, Fitbit weather app on your Fitbit. Uh, you want ATH19, that's the code, ATH19 for a 33% off. And that's uh, thanks to Aussie Byte and Jace. All right, you can call us live as well on the Facebook uh, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. You can call in live to the show if you're listening right now as we go live. Uh, go into Zoom. Or no, you don't even have to do that. You just phone up 02-8015-2088, meeting room 548-358-6358. A lot of eights in there. All right. Uh, what else have I got to tell you? Nothing. Let's just introduce the boys. Uh, Joe. How are you going, Joe? Yeah, I'm good, Dan. That's good. <laughs> what have you been up to this week? Oh, mate, I've been playing around with that Samsung Smart Things. I finally got it going. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'll get to get back to that in a second. Uh, we'll just say good day to Jordan. How are you going, Jordan? Hey, mate, how are you? Good. What have you been up to this week? Yeah, not much. I usually have my theme muted right when you ask me how I am, and it takes me a, a second to um, acknowledge it, doesn't it, usually? No, I've been been um, flat out the last couple of weeks. I think when I was on the show last week, I talked about Android Prime OS yep. and how I could get that working on the Surface Pro, thinking, oh, this is awesome. I can dual boot my Surface with Android and Windows, um, and I thought that would be awesome. So I went out and bought a... A Surface Pro 6, and I can't get the touchscreen to work. Oh, no. Uh, is it like a driver or something? They say on the internet that it is, but I should have researched it, whether it would work on the Surface Pro 6 before I <laughs> jumped, the, jumped the gun. I know oh. I could use the Surface Pro 6 at work and stuff. There's plenty of uses for it. And I can get Android on there. I just have to use a mouse and keyboard with it. Yeah. But I would have liked to have used the touch side of it, but mm. maybe it'll come. Maybe they'll release a new update of Prime OS and it'll fix it. I don't know. Mm. Well, well, we'll see. It's a very sexy machine, though. I must admit that Surface Pro 6. How much are they? No. They're, they're not cheap, are they, those Surface I got Pros? that on special at JB Hi-Fi, actually. Right. For uh, 15, I think it was 15.49 or something. For oh, the, that's not too bad. The 256 gig uh, with 8 gig of RAM. It's the i5 edition. Right. It's pretty nice. That's it's not, pretty nice. Oh, yeah, with look at that. Key, keyboard included. Are they the ones on the movies? Probably. Yeah, right. Nice. And they, you know, with the keyboard that clips off. and. Yeah, nice, nice. I've been watching Billions. There's little little uh, Microsoft laptops. I just everywhere. love the difference between the, the first one the, um, and the, the six. Like, like I can roll the flip right back. Yeah, that's the go. That's, that's like amazing. On, on the Surface 1, you can't do that. You're stuck with it just in one position. I had, I had one right here somewhere. No, no, no. What happened to it? Because it wouldn't. You know, I, learned, I also learned that the Surface Go will also do Prime OS. There's a YouTube video. It's the only one out there that I could find that Surface Go will do will do Android as well. You can right. dual boot from the Surface Go. So all those people that had Windows S or whatever you want to call it, Windows 10 S, that's only works on the App Store. Yeah. Um, they can only install apps from the Windows App Store. You could install Prime OS on Surface Go, but you may have the same touchscreen issues. I'm not sure. All right. Well, that's that's good. Well, I hope you get something sorted there. I'll be able to use yeah. it anyway. Now, oh, I can use it either way. I can still yep. do everything I want to do. I just wanted to have that one audio mixing application that I use. Right. 
cool. I'm just worried, <laughs> just worrying there if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm too loud or not, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, also, don't forget the Aussie, to me, mate. AussieTechRadio.com. Get it on the TuneIn Radio app cross-platform. Uh, just search for Aussie Tech Radio wall-to-wall. Podcast, 24-7, new shows every Friday. And you can get us on the Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. And the show notes are always at AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash podcast. Now, Joe, tell us about your router. How did you fix it? What was the problem? And, um, yeah, give us the give us the guts. Yeah, well, well the, the problem I was having was that I wanted to try and run the Smart smart Things um, hub. That's yes. That's got the built-in Zigbee and, and Z-Wave. Yep. Um, and Wi-Fi together with my existing network. And um, what I was doing beforehand was trying to connect it directly to my router. Yep. Um, and it wouldn't work properly that way. So what I ended up doing, the back of the Samsung Smart Things has a in and an out port, mainly mainly to to, to connect more than one Smart Things router together. Right. So yep. what I did was I connected the the Samsung Smart Things router directly to my cable modem. Right. Cable modem um, to the Smart Things router, and then from the from the router to my other router. Right. That seems to work fine, but. Now I've got a different problem. <laughs> As you do, yes. <laughs> okay, so the problem now I have is it's a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi band on that router. Yep. On that hub. Um, and it, it connects automatically to whatever it feels like, basically, which I don't, I like, I don't like that. I'd either want 2.4 to connect to 2.4 and... Uh, Five to five. So yes, okay. So when so you mean like not normally with one of those routers, you it'll put out the two SSIDs, the two point four channel and the five point four channel, so you can see both. So you're saying you you can't see the both channels. You can just see the Samsung, and then it determines if you're connecting through five or two. Correct. Ah, I see. Right. So you can't disconnect from one, and then so it never connects to it. Yeah, you can, but um. The, the problem is you can't tell the router which one you want to stay on. Yeah, right. So what... Can you disable one in the router? No, you can't. I already wrote to Samsung's uh, SmartThings support. And they wrote back to me saying that it automatically detects um, the Wi-Fi to the strongest signal. Um, and because mm. my phones are close by to that particular um, router, it, it picks up our phones okay. So but what then it won't allow anything that's two point four to connect. Oh, okay. So so if you've connected to it at five with a device and you come along with a two point four device, it won't connect. No, that's no. what I said. So can you disconnect the five? Well, just what I'm so, gonna have, yeah, I'm gonna have to try and disconnect the Because uh, it'll always take the five over the four if it can anyway. That's right. Yeah. But but I mean Yeah, you should over the two before How do you disconnect five in your phone? Can't you just, isn't it two Wi-Fi connections? One's two point four and one's five. No, it's coming through as one. No, it's, no, that's the thing. It's got the same problem. Oh, really? Hmm. That's so a it's not two separate. So did right. the did the that so smart? I don't think they're two separate radios. They are two separate frequencies that come through, but you can't. The same as like on a phone, you can't say, okay, we'll turn off the five signal and just connect the four, uh, two point four. Did you did the smart things have an interface? Did you find the interface? I did find the interface for it, but it wasn't the Samsung interface. It was a third-party interface that somebody has um, made up for it. Right. That sounds dodgy, uh, doesn't it? Even there, even there, it doesn't allow you to, to do anything. So what was it branded? The interface wasn't branded Samsung. No, this was some other dev- um, some other one that someone's put together in the, community, so, in, in the forum community. Right. Okay. So that doesn't sound right, though. Is, yeah, that doesn't sound right. Like, it should have a Samsung interface, surely. Like, does well, it? Well, I haven't been able to find one, and the only one I found is the um, the one that um, the like I said in the Samsung community in the mm. in the forums. Yeah, right. Maybe I'd ask uh, Samsung or just try. Can you? Is it maybe someone on YouTube, like YouTube, the Samsung IoT of things, smart things, whatever it is, uh, interface? Because that doesn't sound right. Like I'm not saying it's it not. Doesn't it sound right. Doesn't sound right. I, I, it, it, that's how it is. It, it only allows you to connect to one or the other, not both. Hmm. 
All right, no worries. Well, you can't turn worry. the radio off one or the other. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, like you know how you got your normal wireless router. That, you know you got your four port, five port, or six port, whatever wireless router, your home router. Yeah, you can normally get into the interface and you can turn one or one or the other off. Yeah, can you turn yeah. it off in your phone? I don't think you can turn it off in your phone. Have you seen Is there any way to turn off five G off? I don't, hmm. I, don't, I don't think I've seen anywhere on, on the Android phone that, in the settings that you can do that, unless you know of them. No, unless you get an app or something, or it might do it. Don't know. But a um, party app that will operate it. Like, I know you can turn off your 4G and your 5G or your 4G and your LTE. Or Yeah, that's, that's interesting, you know. I, I might have to see whether I can just turn both my phones off because I've got my phone and my wife's Samsung phone, and they're both connected to it, and they both run up 5G. I don't think I have anything else in the house... That's 5G apart from those two devices. And because it's it picked them up, there. I might just turn them off and see whether it will detect 2.4 only. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Test that. But, yeah, not every device has five. So. No. Well, yes. all right. Well, I've got, I've, while I've, I'm a bit sorry, I'm just getting ready for the next thing. Um, because for some reason that this uh, Ycast that I use for the videoing, it doesn't let you capture the, the web browsers anymore. So it's just giving me a few problems. But uh, anyway, like, we'll f- hope you figure that out, oh, Joe. Great, Clint. No, it's not that. I'm, I'm using the latest version, paying for it. I'm going to have to take, you know, take use of some of that support that they offer. But uh, look, this this might help you out, Joe. Maybe for Father's Day, you could get some uh, Xbox personal soaps and personal uh, uh, deodorants. I don't know if you... can wash away those problems. Don't know if you heard of, heard of these things. There you go. You get some... Uh, <laughs> uh, they've t- Xbox has teamed up with Lynx to create the body spray, deodorant, deodorant and shower gel. Xbox and Lynx have gone for pulsing green citrus... Top, <laughs> top notes of kaffir lime, and no, it's not going to make my son buy an Xbox. And he loves links, but he's not going to buy an Xbox. <laughs> and winter lemon, uh, aromatic herbal middle notes of mint and sage, and woody bottom notes of woody uh, bottom. I know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I, I that don't. Just goes, that just fits in too many sentences for my liking. Woody bottom. I don't know if I want to buy any any sort of uh, personal deodorant that has anything to do with bottoms, but any and, and a woody bottom note of patchouli and clear wood. So there you go, <laughs> eh? You can get to put so now. Some... PlayStation's going to have to come out with a blue one. Yeah, put some of those in your shopping trolley, and uh, away you go. Look, I might even be able to get that. <laughs> see if I can. What's get... the uh, What's the fragrance? I've just what you wanted me to tell them again. What's it say? What's the say? The fragrance is. Is it the Africa one or is it the or is citrus it, one? He was saying, yeah, the pulsing, the pulsing green citrus, the kaffir lime, green citrus. <laughs> pulsing green citrus. So there you go. While yeah. you're playing the Xbox, you can stuff some of that 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 stench up your nose and see yeah, how you go. You need some smelly stuff because if you're playing your Xbox, you've probably been there for about seventy-two or ninety-six hours or something. Oh, <laughs> well, that's right. Do you reckon? Do you reckon this is something smelly? Do you reckon this is a goer or not? Like, is, this, is it something your household... I suppose if it smells nice, you know? Maybe. I, I, don't, know. I don't think so. It, it reminds me of those, you know, celebrities that put their brand name on, on the... On the, on the uh, hmm. It's a bit like that. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, uh, what's her name? Maybe they... Yeah, the, maybe like Britney Spears having her own perfume. Maybe, maybe the, something like that, yeah. Maybe the testers have gone around a room of uh, Xbox players and all the losers, they're, they're just wiping sweat off the Xbox losers and jarring that, and they're going around wiping the sweat off the Xbox winners, and you've got the, the, the scent of winning and the scent of loss. Maybe they... Oh. You know? I would think it would just be more likely they're just going around finding all these Xbox people that haven't come out of their rooms in months and they probably need some fresh smell. Mm. Well, we've just got a note from Will. We're playing Fortnite non-stop for, you know, a week. Yeah. Showers. Well, we've just got a note from Will who says that he'd love to sit and watch. Well, thank you, Will, but obviously we're not as important as Kevin Bloody Wilson. No. So we're only talking about Rodney Rood and Will's off to see Kevin Bloody Wilson. So um, <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, Will, well, I think... I want Will to pick up some of that Xbox, um, that oh, Xbox smelly yeah. stuff for his car trip. Pick up some Xbox uh, uh, deodorants, Will, and you will pick up tonight. <laughs> that's, that's their line. Now, um, yeah, just uh, listen for the dictaphone song. That's probably my favourite. Now, all right, uh, let's go on to move on to something else. Uh, Joe, what have, what have you got for us this week, please? 
you know, the, you know how these things, you know, I don't like ads in, in Facebook and I don't like ads in anywhere, basically. Yep. This is now a new thing that's coming out now and ads from influencers um, that you don't follow are about to hit your Instagram feed and also your stories. Mm, great. Yeah. So how does that work? I mean, Instagram is now allowing advertisers to promote branded content from inst- uh, from influencers uh, in, in, in the way of ads to your feeds and to your stories. That means you might start seeing um, an influencer's you know, advertising regardless of whether you follow them or not. Yeah. Why would you want to do that? Well, I don't know. Apparently, the brands... Brands can now use Facebook's ads platform to get analytics of how their posts are performing and um, they can optimize their campaigns accordingly. So um, like any other ad on Instagram, the brand contents will be marked with a sponsored at the top of the post and have a a paid partnership with the message um, (laughs) on the brand above the captions. The feature will be rolled out in the uh, feed in the next few weeks. I mean, really? Yeah, like it's um, I I I don't know I don't know about you, but I don't really look at ads. Like you can just tell an ad a mile away, especially on Facebook. And and I I, I look at it and I think, oh, is this an ad? You just quickly look up, you see the word sponsors, and I just flick straight off it. I, I'm just not interested. But I, I also hear that well, these influencers, or especially the foodie, the food influence, they're getting kicked out of restaurants. People hate them. The chefs hate them. Because they, they, all they want is free food. But, uh, but yeah, like, look, is it, it's probably part and parcel of getting a free service, I guess. Um, then again, would you pay for Instagram? Look, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like you. I mean, I, I see an ad and I just flip past it. But every now and then something does catch my eye. And yeah, that's, true. That's what, that's, that's, what they, that's what they bank on. They bank on, you know, someone who's, oh, you know, this this might be something I'm interested in, and that's what they bank on. So, um, yeah, well, that's right. So, yeah, so an influence. How many how many followers do you have to have to be an influencer? Do you reckon? Well, I don't know. I, I think from the the story that I was reading, that person that's um, on there at the moment, the one you got in the video, I think they're somewhere around about thirty thousand followers. Right. Yeah. So to start, how do you get to become an influencer? You must have to. Well, she's probably got a nice house. Uh, we're just watching a video for those on the audio with some influencer with thirty thousand followers. She's got a she's got a pretty nice bedroom. Um, she's wearing nice clothes. I suppose she's just got a a, a bit of a an a a, uh, a knack for taking nice photos of nice stuff, and she's just built up from there, I guess. Oh, look, influencers become influencers when someone starts approaching them to sell products or services for them. Mm. You, know, you, you get a lot of, um, I, I know people who, who, I know one particular influencer who's got about 80,000 followers and he gets sent stuff to him every month. You know? And all he's got to do is take a photo with them. Yeah, right. And, um, and post it. Yeah. Um, once, a, once, or, once a week. Yep, and uh, and he gets to keep all the products he he gets sent to him, um, so therefore, um, people sometimes pay for that as a as a like uh, an ad for him. You know, like you mm. will give you hundred dollars every time you post a picture of of you using this product or wearing this product or whatever it is that they give him. Yeah, yeah. Look, I don't know. As long as I, yeah, I guess the at the at the moment it's all going about you know sort of trying to tailor the ads to you, aren't they? Like you know, so you know you might have in your hobbies or you might be clicking on other posts to do with technology, but then you know it's not going to be any good if you start getting uh, you know ads that are just dealing with snails or <laughs> something like that. Well, no, well, so the, the, other, the other thing as well is um, he gets um, just last week he was telling me that he got sent a set of headphones. Right. Sort of earphones, the, the, the wireless ones. Yeah. And we're talking about 150 bucks um, brand, uh, per pop. In one yeah. Of those. Yeah. Well, that's probably. He's got to be done doing is just take a photo every now and then wearing them. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's just one way of getting it out there. Is if you've got a lot of people, people will go, oh, yeah, they're pretty cool headphones. What? Does, or he's a pretty cool dude. That Joe, Joe the Gadget Man, he knows his gadgets. What, what headphones is he wearing? Oh, yeah, right. Might go and uh, yeah. grab some of those. Yeah, so if you want anything, send it over to myself or to Glenn or to Jordan. And, uh, yeah, so, well, we're, happy to, oh, we're happy to be influencers, aren't we? Oh, I'll wear a hat. Send me some of that Xbox perfume. 
<laughs> well, Will just said that there's a lot of Xboxes in Ipswich. Well, <laughs> if he uh, if he buys some of that perfume, you'll be able to make them all smell nice, Will. Won't you? So there you go. All right, let's. Uh, have you got any? Have you got anything to add to that, uh, Jordan? Or are you pretty right? I love that comment. That was, I was having a giggle at that earlier. <laughs> you know, Will's comment about his Xboxes. Yeah, you got to get rid of those ones. Um, I did ask for stories. I thought they'd synced across my browsers, but they, <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think they have. I'm going to I'm going to put that up in the in the in the run sheet for the show. You know, I'm going to say, uh, you know, Aussie Tech Radio, tune in radio app, blah blah blah, and also don't forget this week Jordan's browser hasn't synced. So, <laughs> oh, it hasn't sinked. It never it sinks. Know. It's hopeless. No. no. i tell you what, though. I can find one here on my, my new surface because that's where it started. <laughs> All right. Well, if it... so I've got a good a good one. Yeah. Well, it's not a big one, but it's, a, it's kind of... I always have a bit of a laugh at Apple. Will will be having a laugh with me at Apple. But Apple, it's just to cut a long story short, has released... What is it? The, um, the new Mac Pro, is it? Yeah. For like... Six thousand dollars or something. Like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now they've released a stand, a monitor stand. Yeah. That you can buy for a thousand dollars. Oh, don't tell me. Really? That's cheap. Yeah. That's, That's pretty cheap. Uh, it says that because the new Pro stand is priced at nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Which is as much as an iPhone XS. The uh, the murmurs rippling through the crowd were audible. <laughs> oh, even on the events live stream. Um, as was, it sounded like a, a soul clap from someone in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> now look, because I, 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 I don't Good know. If, Let's release a one thousand dollar stand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can get a uh, a vi- an image of that for you guys on the video. Let me see if I, oh, this might be it here. Have a look at have a look at this thing. There it is. So that's a that's the it's nothing flash, um, but I'll t- I'll give you some more info about that. Give us some more info about it because uh, Eric's asking. Oh no, he's saying don't talk about it. <laughs> I'll, uh, we want to hear all about it. We want to hear about it. Yes, the bad stuff, the laughable stuff. Because Eric loves to laugh at Apple. Yes. Yeah, so the the new the new MacBook Pro starts at five thousand nine hundred ninety nine. That'd be this is all be US. The monitor. They've also got a monitor. Okay. So the MacBook Pro is separate. That's at six thousand. Then you need a monitor. If you want to buy if you want to buy the Pro Display XDR. Now, why wouldn't you, with with initials like that, a Pro Display XDR? Uh, That's well, awesome sounding. Yeah, XDR monitor for Apple Back Pro. And that will set you back almost as much as the computer. It'll set you back five thousand so, dollars. So you got the computer for six, the monitor for five. So now you're up to eleven, and but you need a stand. So have a you can buy a stand for a thousand. Why does the monitor come with a stand? Well, this is this is the thing. The stand itself, this is how it's this described. The stand itself is very attractive. Sports a metal aesthetic and magnetically and magnetically attaching to your pro. So so the monitor magnetically attaches, so that's pretty nifty. That's what you're getting for your thousand bucks. Uh, it allows you to tilt to most angles and even rotate from landscape to portrait mode. Uh, it's also impossible, but this is another another problem. It's also impossible to use a third party stand with the monitor unless you purchase a Visa mount adapter. Guess where you get a Visa mount adapter from? Apple mm. Store. Guess how Can much you use the- a different monitor altogether with it. I wonder. Probably, but guess how much your Visa adapter will be? Oh. It'll be two hundred dollars. <laughs> So, it's just it's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely crazy. It's out of control. You know, and then in twelve months' time it'll slow down and it'll need a new operating system and then you'll have to upgrade it. You know, yes. you've got to spare eleven grand a year. Yeah. That's right. Oh, it's, your device. It is it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Stupid. It's it's just not even reasonable. Yeah. It's like having a, a diamond Apple Watch, you know, made for for thirty grand and then a year later it gets gets upgraded and you've just turfed it out. Now I've got this guy in the Facebook chat called Eric. And he's going, Tim Tim Cook is poo. I won't say I won't read what he's actually said. Uh, Tim Cook is shot. I will take that stand and shove it up his blank. And <laughs> cheese grater Mac Pro it looks like blank. All stands can do that. Four hundred bucks, yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I so it's too much. Chinese copies are going to come out. They're going to make a fortune. 
<laughs> oh, it's just too much. Yeah. But I think uh, Joe the Gadget Man might buy one. You reckon, Joe? Hey. No, I'm not getting one of those, no. <laughs> I've got a, uh, a bricky mate next door who'll give you a couple of bricks. You can just sit on top of that. Well, yeah, what right. about... Here's an idea. Why don't we just go and buy the monitor and hook it up to a PC? Then we save then we save $6,000 on the computer. We just get a nice yeah. monitor for five grand. Yeah, it's just totally crazy. It's crazy. What else is in the stand? Anything? I was just wondering if it's got Wi-Fi or... Gold? You know, does it talk to you? Is there any AI in it or anything like that? Nothing. No, some, some sort of... No moving mechanisms automatically magnifying things together or so, something else. A pleasuring device? I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like a little, one of those facial vibrators? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. Um, you think it would come with the standard USB ports and maybe sound ports and whatever else? Or something on it, wouldn't you? You'd think that you could plug into it with something. Yeah. Bluetooth it, Bluetooth it as a Bluetooth speaker or something under it. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that is crazy. But also... Eric reckons a milk crate would go pretty... I reckon a milk crate would actually go pretty good, Eric. That'd be about the right height. Yeah. Well, it looks like... It does look like a cheese grater. Uh, but also to come out of the... Well, see, all this has happened because of the WWDC, which is the Worldwide Developer Conference that Apple does every now and then. Uh, it's uh, iPad... The things that are coming out, this is the things that are going to be revealed uh, in the coming future. iPad specific operating system, which will be dubbed the iPad OS, uh, it will have iOS 13 is coming. The next Mac operating system will be Mac OS Catalina. Apple has unveiled a number of changes coming to iOS and Mac OS apps, including the phasing out of iTunes for the Mac. And I've got a little little bit on uh, iTunes in a second. Yep. Uh, the I, I, iOS 13 and Mac OS Catalina updates are coming in the spring. Uh, so other just just in passing because you know these WWDCs they go on for about two hours. Uh, uh, there's got iOS 13 gets a performance in a dark mode. Uh, it also gets some sort of privacy update. Oh, they'll probably say they invented that dark mode. Probably. Uh, iPad OS, we said the Mac Pro, yes. The the Pro XDR, yes. The OS Catalina, the OS Catalina updates, the end of iTunes and updates and universal apps. Yeah. Are you going to so talk big... about the, um, the OS that Apple's bringing out separately as well? Yeah, that was the, For, uh, the iPad? iPad OS, wasn't it? Is that the iPad? Like something like that. Yeah, yeah iPad it's... OS going to include usb and you get to get another dongle oh nice to your usb <laughs> exciting so so what what the ipads are going to come with a usb port is what you're saying that's going to have you will be able to use a usb with the, the new operating system is going to allow you to use usb with your you know how everyone's been saying for years if only apple the ipad had a usb port it'd be so much more useful well they've added that feature but you're going to need a dongle hmm to convert to <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, it's crazy. This brings me out so the net. got like a little, you can probably get like a, if you look it up on the internet, you'll probably find like a $2,000 pencil case or something made by mm. Apple that you can put your dongles in. But if you, if you, <laughs> <laughs> it's right. It just reminds me of that video that we played a little while ago, what was going around, you know, the guy just, the, the dongle maker, he's, he's invented the dongles. It's a very funny video. I'll see if I can post it again. Hang on, I'll write it down. This is what I do these days. I write things down so I don't forget them. And I write it down and I'll put, uh, find that dongle, the dongle video, and I'll put it on the Facebook page because it's, it is, it's hilarious. It is actually hilarious. You can imagine it um, be. Now, if you want more, uh, if you want a more kinder WWDC review, just jump across to the Aussie Max Zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll support every inch of it and with pride and joy. Michael, I oh, hear he gets up every 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 major announcement. He's up at three a.m. or whenever it is, and he's got his little eyes open with his matchsticks and he's watching it, taking notes feverishly. So he's uh, he's right into it. Mm -hmm. But um, look, let's move off Apple for a second. I'll get back to iTunes in a minute. But uh, let's go and get a bit of variation from Joe the Gadget Man. Well, you know what. The Samsung now has started um, with the Galaxy Home, with the Bixby, um, you know, what's it called? The Bixby system? Yeah. All right, so the Galaxy Home is probably going to come out in the third quarter of 2019. Um, the Galaxy Home apparently looks like a, a vase of some sort um, or a statue that sits on the middle of the table. It's wrapped in fabric, pretty much like the Google Home one is. Nice. Um, it's got three legs on it. It's flat top with the buttons that you can control. Looks a um, bit like a big wine glass. 
Yeah, it, it, they, they, they're resembling it to like a vase and, and right. things like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they look all right. And what are they going to do? They're, they're the speakers. Galaxy yeah, Home. There's going to be six speakers in it, um, delivering surround sound type uh, sound. Right. Is it going to be like a, a, an, have an assistant? Yeah, it's going to have the Bixby um, assistant in there. Okay. And how does, what's Bix, how does he work? Is he compatible? Is he getting any better? Bix, Bixby or whatever it is? Well, we don't know yet. I, don't, I mean, I'm not a Samsung user, so I don't actually use the Bixby, but um, it, it's, it's not one of the best smart it's assistants a, around. It's one of the latest, though, isn't it? It's one of the newest. Uh, Bixby's it? been around for a while. Oh, has it? Yeah, it's been around for a while. When I say a while, it's been around for a few years. It's yeah. just never been any good to, to hit the marketplace. It's not, not really that reliable. It's, it's actually worse than the Siri. Well, oh, right. Well, what are they doing? Can you... So, Galaxy Home. Jeez, it's very close to the Google Home, isn't it? And it sure is, yeah. Yeah. It's got, it's got six mics um, in there as well. Six? So, wow. it, it, it should work pretty good, I think. Yes, because I know the problem that I'm having with my little Google Mini is that if it's playing music pretty loud, like, it doesn't hear you. It can't hear you when you're trying to tell it to shut up. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you just got to unplug it half the time. But, yeah, but, yeah, the Galaxy Home. All right, let's have a, let's have a, let's have a proper look at this. So, okay, so there, that, there. Have we got any pricing, Joe? No, there's no pricing as of yet that I'm aware of. Um, just that they're saying that it's going to be released on the third 30 September. quarter of 2019, yeah. Yeah, it looks like the 30th of It's actually September. been delayed for about a year um, for, for various reasons, which they haven't specified. Yeah, it says it was originally announced August 18. Yeah, it's supposed to launch them that. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I well, wonder what, what happened to it. But anyway, there they are. They're coming out. They don't look too bad. They look all right. But, yeah, it um, looks all right. I mean, it, it'll probably do a pretty good job. I mean, it's got six built-in speakers and a subwoofer built into it. So I dare say that it'll probably sound better than the Google one. Yeah, yes. And I, I guess they're, they're probably more of it. Like the Google Mini, the Google Home, you probably wouldn't call them uh, items of well, you know, furniture as like or whatnot, you know. Like these things look pretty funky. They look like they, they're, they're meant to be on your, on your tabletop or something. They look more funky than the Google stuff. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they haven't come up with this with the screen, you know, on on this yet. But I'm guessing that they'd come up next with the screen. Hmm. Because I saw just in passing that the Alexas they've come down in price a bit. Has that happened? I don't know if that's happened in Australia or not. But I just in passing, so I don't know. I haven't got any information about that. I just thought in passing. <laughs> you can get the Alexa and the Google the Minis, you know, for around about fifty, sixty bucks these days. I got my free Mini from Spotify. So, oh, okay, and, yeah. and how'd that go? Yeah, oh, it's just the Google Mini, so it just works just like everything else. I haven't really plugged it into, like, to try and network the two together, so to speak. They're sort of working autonomously at the moment. But, uh, but yeah, like with the Spotify, I just wrote, wrote to them, and they were doing the, if you're on a family plan or sign up to a family plan, they send you Mini. So I did, and I got one. So good. Happy camper. Happy camper. Now, look, let's move on. Is that finished, Joe? You finished with that one? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, cool. All I right. was looking in, uh, they were trying to sell me a, a Google Home today in JB Hi-Fi. Why didn't you buy one? I didn't want one. But, you know, Fair enough. I, I, when I went in there, I don't know whether, because I spent all that money up there on my, on my um, what do you call it, on my Surface Pro. They, I don't know whether that's why, but they all lumped me again two days later. You walk in there, it's like walking into a, it's like being a, a, a bunch of seagulls trying to attack a chip. Yeah, right. You know, call the, you walk in the door and woof, woof, woof. comes 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 sales reps. Nice. But they did they did they did give me lots of discounts on all these things because I was a Telstra customer. Yeah, nice. Okay. And they turn around and said you're paying forty nine bucks a month for thirty gig on your mobile phone plan, and in five seconds now we can change that because we're we're, we're we've got a deal with Telstra. We can change that. Give you fifty gig for forty five. Wow. Telstra. Well, look, I could I could go off in any direction now because I've got a story about Telstra and I've got a story about phone plans. Which way would you like me to go? This is a choice. Spin the wheel. This is uh, choose your own story time. But I don't even know how I got to Google from, from Google to Telstra. So, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> pick, 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 uh, pick, pick Telstra or phone plans? Do both. They're both in the same industry. Okay. 
All right, Telstra is to switch payphones to a flat call rate. Uh, Telstra has changed the pricing for its public payphones to a simple flat rate for both local and selected international calls. Uh, pricing will shift from a distance-based model, which the old STD. Oh, I'll tell you, uh, you, you, you talk to someone in the Telstra shop these days and you talk about STD calls, they don't know what you're talking about. They think, they think you need to go to the doctor. But, you know, it's just you know, long trunk calls and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> So the pricing, so the pricing will shift from a distance-based model to a flat call rate of fifty cents, unlimited, to standard fixed lines in Australia. So the, apparently, these are the most significant changes in thirteen years for the old payphone. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, giving users greater value for money. Woo. Uh, also, for the first time, Telstra payphones will be able to receive calls. Will be finally like the movies. I thought you they know? could anyway. Yeah, I thought they as could as too. As if as you, as you knew the you number. Knew the- the number, yeah. Yeah, but maybe that was in the old days, Jordan, when we probably, you know, when they were in vogue and when me and you probably used to use them, but uh, but no, probably not you now. Could, you could look up the number on the wall and you could yeah, that's remember it. it and yeah. tell your friend to ring you there later. <laughs> you could do that, but I don't know if these new ones, if, if these ones like I'm going to put up on the screen, I don't know if they do it. But uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so you can ring them. So the Telstra, a Telstra spokesman has said, there's a payphone how to call guide. Next to the phones will display the number of the payphone. When the payphone number is called, the payphone will ring. Hello. If a person answers a ringing payphone, they will not be charged. Good. Or they might win 20 grand. <laughs> they might. Uh, both parties. But the funny thing is, you know, when you're, you know, you've got your dial tone and, and you've got your engage signal. Well, apparently, now, when you, if you ring a payphone and, and, the, and the payphone picks up, both of you will hear a cuckoo. Cool. Oh, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, I am serious. I have to try that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't even know where to try it. I haven't seen a pay. Oh, yes, I do. There's one up the street. I haven't seen many of them around anyway. But yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. Well, let's it's try that. Cuckoo, because you, you know, you why don't you have a mobile phone? You're a big cuckoo without one, I reckon. <laughs> let's go on cuckoo. A friendly reminder that you're going cuckoo because you're using a normal phone. Now, I'll give you a challenge, Joe, if you're up for it. If you if you do go and test cuckoo. the cuckoo, try and record it so we can have a listen to it. <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah, that sounds like a bit of fun. I'll try and do that. <laughs> right. So I wonder if it's like you know the old John Law's cuckoo or if it's just a more tamer cuckoo noise. But, um, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, funny. Funny. Now the other uh, the other other way I was going was into phone plans. Now there's a new new uh, person in the new company in the marketplace for phone plans. They don't look too bad either. This, the, I hope you didn't sign up, did you, Jordan? That JBI five? Did you sign up for a contract? No, they just swapped me over. I had to recontract for another another twenty four months, but I haven't got a new phone. And and they just said to me, if you want to get a new phone anytime, as long as you're staying with Telstra, they won't charge you. Right. And, to get on a plan and charge a new contract or give you a payout fee or anything, because I own I own my phone. I haven't upgraded it. Mm. Well, I've still got the Pixel One. I've had no problem with it. The the new contender is Officeworks. They've launched oh. a mobile virtual network using the Optus 4G network. Oh the, wow! They'll they'll take off. Yes, a cord mobile by Officeworks offers half a dozen plans all month to month without contracts. It's all going that way, isn't it? There's voice and data Google. deals on offer. <laughs> a payphone, payphone calling, uh, and uh, unlimited SMSs with all the basic offering. Now the now the couple of the plans that I've picked out here for you to have a look at is the uh, three gig of data for fifteen dollars a month. That's not bad. That's better than what is I'm getting prepaid without. Prepaid or postpaid? This will be prepaid, I'd imagine. No yep. contracts. I'd be. You'd have to guess prepaid. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's not too bad. So Audi. Ship up. I need an extra gig on mine. Since I went down to my fifteen dollar a month plan, uh, yeah, I'm starting to use all my two gig. I didn't think I didn't, didn't think I used more than two gig a month, but I'm I do. So yeah, three gig would see me nicely. Just nice. Uh, Twenty five dollars buys you ten gig, and forty five dollars of international calls. So that's not bad. That's pretty cool. And forty five dollars buys you thirty gig and four hundred and fifty dollars of international calls. So you know, when you've got a problem with GoDaddy, you can ring them up. You don't have to fumble around with Skype and looking for putting Skype credit in and all this sort of stuff. You just ring up. Uh, if you're on one of these Officeworks plans, you've you've got it at your at the touch, at the ready. 
The data only plans offer data allowances of 7 gig, 50 gig, or 100 gig, and they are respectively priced at $20, $55, and $75. How are they stacking up, Jordan? All right. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, I got 50 gig for 45, so. Yeah, that's all right. And with calls. With unlimited calls. That was that was just through walking in there and them saying that JB Hi-Fi are the only ones that can offer that deal and Telstra don't offer it. So if you're going to JB Hi-Fi and you want to get a discount, like I went in there to buy a, a video game for my boy that he lost. And and we got a pre-owned Spider-Man. I think he lost his and he wanted another one. It was 79 bucks, and we walked out of there paying 38 for it just because we were Telstra customers. Mm, yeah, good. That's, so that's, handy, handy to know if you're a Telstra customer, walk into JBI Hi-Fi, they'll change your phone plan and give you a discount. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's interesting. Office works. They're, everyone's doing phones. Woolworths. Do Coles do yeah. phones? I think so. I think they do. Yeah. Well, And but, how, how's the Optus network going, Joe? That seems all right. You, you're on Optus, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on Optus. And uh, around my place, it's not that good, but other areas, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, look every every carrier every carrier's got their little black spots, haven't they? I guess like I know down Kingscliff you can't get very good Telstra. Uh, yeah, everyone's got little black spots. But uh, but you're going to tell us now, Joe, about uh, the mega worm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's a, a um, uh, an exploit going around called the uh, Blue Keep mega worm that's um, showing up on uh, older systems that haven't been upgraded. Um, what it's used for is um, via remote desktop um, to Ooh. break into services for you know older Windows, which are like Windows 7, XP, uh, Server 2003, 2008, and even Server 2008 R2. Right. Yeah. If anyone has um, has uh, access, you know, like if a, if a, somebody wants to get into your system. They can get into it within 22 seconds with this particular virus. Um, Holy cow. There, yeah, what? So what's, yeah, it, so what's it called, the Microsoft mega worm? Have, yeah, Microsoft have said that um, they've taken unusual steps to deploy patches to Windows XPs and Windows 2003 machines, which are end of life. And I, actually, I do remember now, if, if, um, if you think back for a moment, Windows did release some XP patches Yes. A year or two ago. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, so um, I think that's the reason for it because there's still the, the the thing is so bad that they're still using this exploit today that uh, they're still giving it to people who are still using Windows XP machines. <laughs> I think the exploit, uh, uh, yeah, the exploit must be that bad, or that the the security hole must be that bad that yeah, I think they're still patching XP. They're still releasing the XP updates. Yeah, it's yeah, that's right. We're XP, yeah. So even though the system's been out of service and out of, um, you know, support for so many years, they're still releasing updates for Windows XP machines. Mm. And and I've and I've got this machine that's in the Windows XP machine, which I don't use very often. And every now and then, when I turn it on, it does do some sort of an update. But it's like little little updates. Yeah, but it's only the updates. super super important ones. They won't they won't fix most security fixes, but they have they kind of have to, don't they? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, apparently, because of this one here, um, it's it's that it's that bad. This the exploit that if it gets into your um, gateway on your corporate network, it it just spreads to other machines and it does yeah. infects other computers and, and it can mm. go around the whole enterprise and the whole you know the whole thing. So it's it's really that bad. So well, they don't want to be responsible for that. So of course they'll yeah. yeah. So I'll, for them, it's probably easier just to run a few updates and let them have it, and, and tell the network administrators of you know corporations to run these updates. Mm. Yeah, but that's like but just it's a, it's a good warning, isn't it? To anybody running XP and that just it's just stupid if you're still running it. Yeah, and if you're running running Windows ninety eight, don't worry about it. Nothing's compatible with that, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Keep it running. Keep it keep it humming. I, I doubt you'd turn it on for much. No, I th- oh, was I talking to, if Tim's listening, I think I was talking to you. I think he might have had a 98 machine come in, come into his office. I can't remember if it was you, Tim, or not. But anyway, yeah, so they're still out there apparently. I reckon Steve Gibson's got a couple. Might have well, a couple. I've seen some people, I've, I've heard of some people flashing uh, Windows 98 on some Android phones. They run on some Android phones. Yes, that's right. Yeah, people are doing stuff like that. So, the, yes, yes. So I wonder how that's going for everyone. But yeah, so look, um, 
I guess I just going back to like with the Apple and you know their thousand dollar stand and all that sort of stuff. Uh, <laughs> I can't get over that. Yeah, I know. I, I read the article and I just haven't stopped thinking about how stupid it is. Yeah, it is ridiculous. It's just oh. it's really. I think it's just they're not even caring now about taking the piss. I think they've just gone just a thousand bucks. They probably spun a wheel, a, a chook raffle wheel. Oh, went, it's Apple. People will pay for it. They will. Yeah, it's out of control. Probably got an Apple logo on it, and it's worth a fortune. But what I was what I was getting going to get at was like, so they're they're um, you know, Apple's got that much money, like that much money. Do they really? Why do they feel the need to just suck more out of us or out of their loyal following? You know, like do they really need to do that? Uh, and plus, then you look at say then Microsoft, like, and they're patching XP. So are they are they just keeping people on XP heads to do that? Um, which I think is is resp- corporately responsible responsible of microsoft to do that oh absolutely i think that they have to, i think they have to i mean if something had broken out in their corporate network through an xp machine even if they said they wouldn't support it anymore microsoft wouldn't want to no I, it heads. Yeah. I mean that's smart for them yeah to do. and i think that's why like if they can keep their systems secure then if the, the more viruses and stuff that people that these people can get rid of the better for everyone and but, yeah. But you're right. I think Apple just have a high price tag in anything. I think if they release something cheap, it'd be out of the ordinary, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, you know, I, I have a view on that. If if this is really expensive, it's probably because they're not going to sell many of them. So therefore, um, for the few that actually want it, will actually pay for it, which will make up for the production and manufacturing and marketing and costs and all that. Mm. Or it's because they need the money to make the next edition. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, it could be. The it next be one a... comes out with slightly more rounded corners, and yeah. uh, you can update it yearly. <laughs> oh, but just give it give it two weeks. The knock off, the Chinese knockoffs will be in full swing. That's yeah, that's what I reckon. I reckon they will, and they'll come with Bluetooth speakers and. Yeah, but probably the most just yeah, just going back to that thing quickly. Probably the most impressive thing about it for me was that it magnetically attaches the monitor. Like, geez, it have to be a strong magnet because that monitor would be pretty heavy. Like, it'd have to be a fairly good magnet. Well, I've got a massive old 15-inch speaker at my share with a huge big coil magnet on the back. I reckon if you held that up or anything, it'd stick to it. Stick to it like glue. Um, oh, your... <laughs> as I said before, uh, Apple, have you got these stories, Jordan? Do you want to do one? I was only going to, my last one, I haven't got many either. I've scraped the bottom of the barrel. But it, um, there was, uh, oh, it was on my, I've got two computers in front of me. I keep looking at the wrong one. Um Samsung has partnered with AMD to bring the Radeon graphics to smartphones. Right. Is which that... is quite interesting because the Radeon graphics card, I won't read you the whole story, but the radio, um, the, the Radeon graphics is what most PlayStations and Xboxes and that sort of thing use. So they're planning on bringing that into some of their phone technologies. Okay. And they teamed uh, up with Radeon, which is, sounds pretty cool. Yeah. So what is that going to do for us? Is that going to just give us better graphics on the phone or something? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Reading further down, it, I think, um, I don't want to read the whole article because it, it goes for a bit, but uh, the deal gives AMD's graphics uh, tech yet another platform to call home. When most people think of Radeon graphics, they think of desktop and laptop graphic cards, but the technology is also used in consoles like the PS4 and the Xbox One and will also be used in Google's upcoming cloud gaming service, Stadia. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think you may have spoken about it before, Glenn. Yeah. Perhaps most surprisingly, AMD's graphics technology can be found in certain CPUs produced by its rival Intel. Hmm. Um, yeah, so the, the fact they're bringing that to mobile phones, it's, it's just going to increase the graphics, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Anything to increase graphics, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Now, um, this is uh, this is, might be the last one for the week. I think you're out, aren't you, Joe? Are you finished? Yeah, that's, you know, that's all I've got this week. Oh, right, well, the last one Can here. you talk about iTunes? Yes, I'm just going to do. I'm going to do our iTunes now, just quickly. Uh, apparently, we haven't lost our music. That's what I was getting at. No, no, I don't think you'd lose it anyway. Uh, but what, what's happening is uh, Apple's announced they plan to retire iTunes, uh, but not for the PC at this stage. So the Windows iTunes users will see no change. Uh, Apple said, it, but for the Mac, uh, Apple said it will break up the standalone iTunes software into three new apps called Music, TV, and Podcasts in the next version of the Mac OS, which is, as we've said, is dubbed the Catalina, which arrives in the spring. Uh, Microsoft currently, now get this, Microsoft and now you know my my thoughts on the Microsoft Store, which is pretty p- 
pus. Um, and I think it's probably been about 12 months since I've had a look again in that store. I was probably that's, Nothing's changed. But Microsoft currently lists the Windows version of iTunes as the most popular app in its store, putting it ahead of Netflix and Spotify. So that's quite interesting. Uh, Apple introduced, and just as a as a FYI, Apple... I'll intru- look it up on the App Store for you right now. Apple introduced iTunes in 2001 as a way to add or remove music on old-school iPods. iTunes on the Microsoft App Store has two and a half stars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but is that... By 199 uh, people. Right. So it might be the most downloaded, but it's the most pussiest as well. So yeah. so now you've looked up that up. So that's so so that's something I, I didn't realise. Kind of, I could probably half spin that around and show you that there. Can yeah. Because that's something... But that's something I didn't realise actually, because when they're talking about apps, so that's an actual Windows Ten app. Because I use the iTunes. No, it would still be it would still be the executable file from from iTunes. It's probably just it's probably just linked through the App Store. I'd imagine. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. So it's uh, not an app. It'll it'll still be the. I think it'll still be the actual application, mm. not just an app version, a web app version. Are you an iTunes user, Joe? No, I don't use iTunes. What, what do you um, What do you do for music? How do you collate it or whatever? I usually use uh, YouTube Music. Oh, or, that's right. Yeah. Um, or YouTube. So you got no uh, MP3s, like you know, like anymore. Oh, like look, I've got thousands of MP3s, but I never use them. No, nah, that's right. I, I used to have a heaps of them as well, but since Spotify come on the scene, there's nothing there. No, no, no! You don't use them anymore. Uh, I've got a die-hard Apple Apple fan friend who says he he swears he will never use iTunes. He said that iTunes is the stupidest app, and that he uses um, a different program on his desktop, like to um, do his phone connections. I don't know what it is, but you know, you use you connect your phone up to iTunes in on your computer, and you yeah. Everything. Blah, blah. He said he doesn't use iTunes to do his backing up of his phone and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so I actually terrible. heard that there's an alternative version of iTunes that works very much the same way as the original, but works better. Or it's not iTunes; it's made by someone else or something. Yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Because well, when I had an I'll iPhone, have to ask him. Hmm. Yeah, when I had an iPhone, I never used the. Uh, I, I never used iTunes to back up photos. Because that's the thing with photos, and, and surely everyone's like this. Tell me if everyone's like this. You know, if you if you don't look after your, if you don't cut, don't handle your photos properly, you end up with copies of photos on your phone. They've gone up to your iCloud. They've gone automatically up to your Dropbox or wherever. They're just everywhere. You got all these photos, and all of them are the same because they're just everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, and that's why I I decided not to put them any. They don't upload automatically anywhere. Because every now and then, when the phone gets full, I pull them off onto the computer, and then I'll back them up that way. Yeah, and just zip them up and put them somewhere. Yeah, I don't zip them, but I'll just keep them on the server and back them up, and then I can still put them on your NAS or something. Yeah, and I upload them to the Google Photos. I know it's a bit like with the Google one. I get Google Photos with mine because I got the Pixel. I got that for free, and and part of the deal with the Pixel is is that you get to upload all your photos in full quality without scaling any of them back for free in as much space as you want. But oh. now I find the same thing. I've got every photo I've ever taken is automatically on the in Google. Google yeah. Photos. Yeah, but that can be all right as long as they're not duplicated, and you just yeah you just lose. Well, I've got copies of them as well because you know every couple of months I empty my phone out as well to make space. I think we had, we sort of broached this a couple of weeks ago, but when do they start deleting stuff? You know, with people that are dead and moved on, like you know, <laughs> yeah. like, what why why would Google want to keep say in say in fifty years time? Why would Google want to keep say all the people that are. 60 years old or 70 years old or 80 years old now, why would they uh, want to keep all those photos and stuff? Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. But why? Just uh, they, would, they would just archive them. And there's, a, there's actually a particular service that you can get. I can't think of it now off the top of my head. But all, all it's there for is, is to archive your, your, um, your photos or documents or whatever it is that you have. Right. And, it's in a, in a, and, it's, and it's very cheap. Like I'm talking really, like really cheap mm. to archive. Like I, I couldn't, couldn't tell you. I don't know the price. Yeah. It's really cheap. There's to a free way to archive your stuff, and that is to just don't give anyone your Facebook passport when you die. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. your Facebook will stay there forever. I reckon. I make thought. Sure every, make sure everything's in it before you go. Yeah, I thought that they did. Facebook did close accounts down, but I think they've stopped. 
I think they lot, used to. Apparently, I think we read an article the other week saying this. Mm. I think that's what you're talking about. Is we read a lot of, we, we we read an article saying that there's a lot of Facebook accounts out there of people that don't exist anymore. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds like the, a good place to, to end it. Facebook doesn't exist. Let us not exist for for the rest of the episode. So that's good. All right. So good day uh, on the Facebook live to uh, Will. We heard from Will, Eric, and who else was there? Romeo. And a few others that I can't... Oh, uh, the phone's okay. gone crazy. Oh, well. Yeah, so all right. So the, thanks for uh, joining us live. And you can join us live as well. We're on about Thursday nights, Australian Eastern, uh, around about 6.30 to 7, somewhere around that time. Uh, Eric said someone's a poor idiot. I don't know who. One of us or... No, he's probably still referring to uh, Steve Cook, I think. So he's, he's still going on about Steve Cook. All right, so uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Joe. Thanks for your stories. Thanks for coming in. No worries. Uh, good luck with the router again for the second week in a row. Uh, thanks, uh, Jordan. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for your stories. Thanks for your contribution. And um, thanks for everyone listening. So it's uh, it's uh, great that you listen to us and we appreciate it. So uh, until next time, well, well, don't talk about State of Origin, okay? Maybe. Does anybody ever thank you, Glenn, for all the hard work you put in week in and week out? I don't, I don't need that. You're the thanks. one that's always here and makes sure that it always happens week in and week out. Well, Does anybody ever send you any nice letters to say thanks, Glenn? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, people do send send me emails, say thanks for the show, you know, and all that thanks, sort of stuff. Yeah. So, How many years now? Uh, oh, and I don't know. 600 and something episodes? Yeah, well, 2006 to now, so it's probably, what's that, 14? Coming up to the 14th year or something? That's a fair win, isn't it? It is a fair it. hack, man. Yeah. It's a, a long haul, so good on you yeah. for um, keeping Thanks. the tech community happy. Thanks. I've, I've turned grey. Even even the ones who have been and gone, like Eric, he's still coming back for more on Facebook tonight. Yeah, he's still hanging around there. They still love you, don't they? Yeah, Will and Jace and... Uh, and everyone, yeah, they're all they're all still around. All right, thanks, guys. We'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, I'll go and uh, you know have another cry about New South Wales losing. And so uh, you've earned your stripes to talk about that if you like. Go for it. Yeah, and <laughs> and go the sharks this weekend. All right, thanks, <laughs> thanks, boys. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Cheers, bye all for right, now. Mate. Catch okay. you later. Bye bye.